you know, I found early on that there was no correlation between academic success and success in later life. What I found is that there is a correlation between people who communicate well and how well they communicate in business. Hey guys, how are you doing? It's Matt Haycox here and uh, welcome to another episode of the Matt Haycox Show, one I'm very excited about today. I've got with me our guest, Anthony Wallersteiner, quite possibly the coolest name we've had on the show. Uh, he's, he's neither a rock star nor a gangster though. He is in fact the headmaster of Stowe School. Now, for those of you who, um, I, I guess, who, who don't know, Anthony will tell us a bit more in a moment, but yes, Stowe's a, a, a very famous uh, English, uh, it's, it's, it's a, pre a prep school, isn't it, Anthony? That, 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 yeah, that's uh, it's, it's senior school, yeah, in, independent yeah. senior school. So very famous uh, and long established UK independent uh, senior school. Now, for anyone who's followed me for a long time or, or, or listens to my content regularly, you'll know that I'm, I'm a massive advocate for, for further education, for self-education. Um, and I've never actually talked to anyone in the education space on the podcast before. Uh, I think it's it's probably become a bit cliched on people's podcasts or pe people's you know Insta and YouTube type content nowadays to to just you know slag off the education system for the sake of, sake of it and talk about how the school system's broken. Um, now undoubtedly there's there's elements of truth in that, but I'd I'd like to explore with Anthony. Uh, yeah, I guess his views as as a, as a man on the ground. I want to chuck in my conversations about um, I guess about further education and mistakes we may make as kids. Uh, but very much looking forward to having the chat, uh, Anthony. Thanks a lot for being here, and um, you yeah, know, like I say, looking forward to speaking to you. Yeah, thanks, Matt. I'm delighted to be on the show, and um, yeah, ask me anything you want. Well, j j just I guess just before we get into it, just set the scene a little bit about about your background. Tell us a little bit about Stowe and also how, you know how how you uh, came to be be the head teacher. Uh, you know, I mean, you know, as as a as a kid, um, you know, w w were you were you always a, a, a good learner at school, destined to be a head teacher, or were you were you, were you a naughty boy who would uh, n and no one would ever have imagined to be doing what you're doing today? Yeah, um, gosh, I, I think it'd be a bit sad if I said I was um, destined to be a headmaster from the age of seven or something. Um, so tr truth is, um, both parents uh, came from um, from Germany. My father was, was, was Jewish, so he's an immigrant uh, just before World War II. Uh, so I'm first generation British. And, um, you know, like a lot of um, youngsters, I struggled through school. And it wasn't until until A levels that I, I found somebody who inspired me, and I began to discover the the joy of learning. Um, you know, really got interested in in reading, finding out things for their own sake rather than just a, a means to an end. And you know, I just thought actually this is something I can do. I love connecting with young people. It, it's it's a job which actually makes a difference. You know, as you've said in some of your previous podcasts if you get a good mentor you get a coach if you get somebody who really takes an interest in you um, that that can shape your life and it can make a complete difference to the outcome so one of the one of the reasons I went into teaching was one love the subject and, and two um, I felt there was a, an opportunity to shake up um, a business um, and, and you know teaching you know a lot of people see teaching as completely abstract from the outside world and I felt actually you no know, teaching should be connected with the world outside and we should be preparing kids for, for life beyond the classroom and I know that's something you're, you're keen on exploring as well Matt. What was your subject by the way? So I started off um, uh, as a historian and then when I got to my mid-30s um, my wife's an artist and she's quite abstract and I felt slightly left out of the conversation. So I retrained and did a, uh, a doctorate in art history and art theory in order to understand um, abstract painting a bit more. So, so I'm a historian who then became an art historian. And, wh and when, did, when did you become a head teacher? 2003, so I've been, I've been doing it for about 18 years. And when, when, when you become that, I mean, it, it, I guess, is it like, 
with with the business analogy that I guess you know once you start r- running the business, you, you you've probably got less less time to, you know to do this to do the things in it. I.e., do you spend your time you know running an institution as as a, as opposed to uh, a, 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 I guess you know growing a teaching staff base as opposed to doing a subject anymore or, or doing any of the more nitty gritty teaching activities. So to to use you know one of your analogy there, you know I think you've got to remain connected to the classroom so I've, I've always been a teacher I still teach um, not as much as I would like um, it's always about people so it doesn't matter whether you're running a um, a school a hospital uh, a startup um, you've got to get the right people so this is all about hiring the best teachers teachers who can really communicate with the um, with their classes get the best results um, optimize potential and and share a vision so it, it 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 starts off with with the people then you then you start off with then you go into the the vision about you know how how you see a school evolving you know what are your values what what are the um you know what what are the things that you want to achieve within your school uh, and then you set out a, a, a you know a roadmap to get there so it's, is it not, Stowe, it's not as difficult as it appears. And is it Stowe that you were you were head teacher of in two thousand and three, or have you have you been in yeah. different schools? You, you, you've you've been there the whole time. Yeah. So and, and, a, yeah, but we have changed. So when I took over, it was a um, predominantly a boys school, so eighty percent boys, um, and we're now a co-ed school, and we're, we're, we're nearly at equal numbers of boys and girls. Um, we hardly had any day pupils. We've now got 200 day pupils. We were 590. We're now um, nearly 900 pupils. Uh, so the school has yeah. changed dramatically since I took over. And we've tried to wrestle with quite a few things like affordability. So one, one of the uh, things that interested me was how schools were pricing themselves out of a market and the day fee is, is is about 40% of a boarding fee. So we've opened it up to uh, a swathe of people who probably would not have been able to afford independent education without, without going into the day market. Um, we're also looking at, we've also um, uh, expanded the school. So this year we took on uh, two prep schools, Winchester House and Swanbourne. So we've created the Stowe Group and we get economies of scale. We're working as a much more efficiently as a result now of having 1,400 pupils within the group. So it's it's constantly pushing forward, looking for new opportunities, um, making it more efficient, and and connecting with with parents. You know, asking them what they want from their school. So instead of sitting back saying, "Look, we're an exam factory. We'll get you." Uh, your kids GCSEs and, and A levels. Um, we're saying, you know, what, what what do you want from a school? You know, how do you want to see this school um, uh, define and shape your your children? And what sort of outcomes are you interested in? So we're constantly listening to um, to our parents, who are our our customers. So instead of treating it very much as a kind of top down institution, you know, this is what you're getting. We're saying, you know, come in, and you know. Many of you are very successful people. You're running businesses. You're entrepreneurs. You know you've got um, experience of uh, the world outside education. We we can learn from you. You know it's one of the reasons I'm interested in talking to you, Matt, because of what what you've achieved and how you see the potential in a business. And you know when you invest, you ask some pretty searching questions, don't you? No, for sure. I, I took, I took, you know, I've been making. I'm always making notes when I'm when I'm listening, and uh, I, I must have must have had to make a, a, full, a full page of questions. I want to I want to ask you just 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 from that last last um, yeah, couple of statements you were making. Uh, I mean, I mean, t- tell me I, just just one quick one. I was going to ask a minute ago. Um, it, when you joined, when you joined, uh, as, well, not, sorry, when you became headmaster in 2003, uh, you, you you talked a minute ago about how everything is about getting the right people. You know, school or hospital or business, uh, which you know, I could, couldn't agree with more. And you know, it, it's some, something that I'm, uh, I guess, you know, it's probably spending 50% of my time with at the moment in terms in terms of trying to change cultural problems that we've got, which is I'll blame myself for allowing them to become ingrained in the past, you know, for, for probably not uh, not 
understanding the importance of it historically, and then also also you know then, then spending the rest of my time trying to recruit the right caliber candidates. But when you came in, um, I mean, did, did did you feel there was some house cleaning to do then to to to, to get the vision that you wanted, or uh, you know, uh, um, or did you did you bring certain people in, or, or you know, did you have a, quite a job on your hands, you know, ch ch changing you know, the, some of the existing mentality and culture to you know, to, to fit your bigger plan and bigger vision? Yeah, no, re really interesting question, Matt. Um, so the first thing you've got to do is is um, understand the existing ethos of, of and culture of, of the institution, um, because otherwise you, you're going to have a bumpy ride, aren't you? If you're going to try and change everything, then you, you can lose the whole thing and you can lose the confidence of the people you're working with. So uh, immerse yourself in the culture. Uh, try and understand what makes it tick, what makes people... What, what attracts people to it in the first place because if you alienate your core supporters then you haven't got anything to 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 work with after that so um so it's a it's a it's a mix isn't it of um understanding and respecting what is there already and then overlaying it with with new ideas and giving it a new direction and with 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 me i was very lucky um uh i i i spent a year researching the history of the, 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 the school, what was there before the school was became a school in 1923. And so I was able to pre present to the, um, uh, the common room and, and the, the governors and then the parents what I thought the future for the school might look like. And, and for me, it was um, liberal, progressive, humane, um, based on equality, diversity, inclusion, um mentoring and nurturing excellence wherever it could be found um i wasn't that interested in whether the excellence was in the classroom or outside the classroom whether it was music drama art or or, or sport that you know find something that you're good at and and run with it and everything else will, will fall into into shape you know because once, once you start feeling good about success and and you, you're getting people saying you know matt you know that was a, a fantastic piece of art or that was a a great game of rugby then you start feeling good about other parts of your life and, and success breeds success and you can then translate some of the um the dispositions and attitudes that you've developed into other areas of your life but you've got to have one thing going well and and i defy anybody to show me a child that isn't good at one thing or isn't interested in one thing um, and sometimes with boys, you know, it, it's gamifying um, academic success. You know, they're, they're, they're you know, used to um, uh, challenging each other online. So you then use the language of games and bring it into the classroom. So they begin to get, you know, success and metrics which measure success, which they can understand. Um, but it's, it, it's getting under the, um, the skin and finding out what gets somebody out of bed in the morning you know for you it, it's the um the challenge of um getting a business and revitalizing it and finding somebody that you you believe in and that you can help and and that's not that different from what i'm doing we're quite, I mean, we're, quite so, we're kindred spirits <laughs> well it's so so true what you say and that uh, you know something you know I, I spent a lot of time talking about you know more so last year uh, when when we were kind of in in the depths of Corona and people you know people were losing their jobs or or, or worried about whether we were going to lose their jobs and I was I was trying to talk talk to a lot of people about you know the the importance of even if you weren't going to set up your own business uh, to to have have secondary income streams um, and you know people's default you know is always oh well the, the, there's nothing that I could charge for or there's nothing I'm good enough at or the, or, or, the, or there's not, nothing I like enough um, but you know you're very much like like you say you know you, you defy someone to find a child who's not good at something you know, in, in in real life you know, or sorry, in, in adult life rather, you know, we, we've all got the skill, you know, a skill set in something, you know, whether, whether that is, you know, uh, that, you, that you're a French speaker or you're a great gardener or you're a great chef or, you're, or, or, or whatever it may be. Yeah, and okay, these may not be skill sets that are monetizable to millions and millions of pounds, but, you know, I really believe there isn't, 
you know, that there is no one out there who doesn't have some kind of skill set that is something that they could charge other people to do and very much enjoy their life doing doing at the same time. Uh, but, but I mean, I mean, you know, what when you started you know, with this mentality uh, for the school back in 2003, I mean, did did you meet much friction? Because I mean, it's quite it's quite a um, I don't, you know, say a, a, a ballsy statement for 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 want, for want of a better word, you know, within, within the scholastic system. I mean, is, I mean, look, it's 20 odd years since I've been on the receiving end of education, but I mean, you're, I came from an era where it was very much about um, about the success of your exams, and you know, and, and and whether whether that was what we were getting instilled in us from our teachers, or that was what schools used as their selling point to parents who were trying to come. It was, you know, our pass rate at eleven plus, our pass rate at thirteen plus, etc. Is this? And I mean, I, I don't know. I've ever heard anyone talk about the in education talk about the fact that it would be uh, just as important, if not more important, to be you know, to, to, to excel in something outside of the classroom. That said, I, I couldn't agree with you more, but uh, you, you're certainly the only person I've heard say it's in education. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, I found early on that there was no correlation between academic success and success in later life. W what I found is that um, there is a success. Uh, there is a correlation between people who communicate well and how well they communicate in business. Um, numeracy, which isn't about mathematics, it's about being able to see you know read a balance sheet and see the potential in a business um literacy is the ability to to communicate clearly and succinctly and get your ideas across um the ability to use um different platforms like the one you're using today um and, and get an idea across so th those are those are, are skills which don't necessarily have a gcse or a level certificate attached to them and and, and increasingly, you know, as the world changes and, you know, we're competing with artificial intelligence, with robotics, you know, in the last two years, seven million jobs have disappeared because of AI and, and robotics. So we can't compete um, in raw material. We can't compete in labor. But what we can compete on is um, entrepreneurial ideas, creativity, intellectual flair and that is something that perhaps isn't necessarily captured by the traditional exam system so yes you know we, we've got a school that caters for the traditional uh, exam athletes and those you know the, the, those are the kids who get, get the um, eights and nines of gcse's and the a's and a stars at a level and they go to the top universities so yes we'll look after them um, but we'll also look after others who you know perhaps struggle in school and find it a bit more of a challenge and we we need to we need to cater for them identify their skills find their potential make them feel valued because a lot of um, the reason why education has not um fails a lot of our children is because they don't they don't see the point of it and they don't feel valued and the the treadmill um puts them on a, a, a pathway of, um, of failure. And if, if you're being told constantly when you're at school that you're an abject failure and that you're no good at this and you're no good at that, then you're unlikely to turn into a fulfilled and um, happy adult. So um, that, that's the cycle that we're trying to break, to get kids to feel that they, they are valued, they are appreciated, they do have skills, um, and those skills may lie outside the traditional academic framework that we've seen which is a legacy really from you know victorian times now our exam system hasn't changed substantially for 100 years which is probably the only industry which hasn't you know hasn't radically transformed but your your educational experience um you know will have been the same as your dad's educational experience and your grandfather's and you know when you look at the way the, the world has changed and technology has changed then surely there's something wrong with that model well I'm going, going, going off on a slight tangent here um and um it, it wasn't one of my original questions but uh it just made me think about that i mean what, what's what's your views what's your views on homeschooling and uh, you know, if, if that if that you know has has a, a valid place in in today's world, you know, I mean, it seems to be 
when I say growing, it's all, all relative, but I think you certainly yeah. probably hear about more homeschooled kids today than you would have done five or ten years ago. <laughs> do, yeah. do, do, do you, would you say that is some, something that would, own, would be viable had the existing educational framework that those, that those kids have been in you know, not be suitable? I mean, do, do you think one method is materially better than the other? Yeah. Well, put, to put that into the context, um, all the children in the UK have been homeschooled twice in the last 18 months. So um, once from, um, from, from March 2020 until the, the 1st of September 2020. And then, of course, we had the lockdown in, in January 2021 until March 2021. So we've all experienced home education and it, it works up, up to a point. Um, you know, I think everyone was surprised at how well kids adapted to, to, to the, the technology and learning at home from a screen with a teacher remotely. On the other hand, what, 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 what you lose is the, um, uh, the connection with other people schools are about rubbing off edges they're about socialization they're about teamwork they're about working in 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 groups to solve complex problems and um we had you know I, uh, dur during one of the lockdowns uh, i did a uh, an experiment with some of our kids to just ask them to measure how much time they were spending online so these kids were were uh, logging on for uh, assembly at 8 15 uh, first lesson 8 45 teaching until about 12 30 uh, lunch hour then two more lessons finishing at three uh, getting a bit of exercise going out running around walking the dog uh, and then starting their, their homework at about 5 30 another couple of hours and then um, logging on to netflix or amazon prime or whatever now tv whatever it was and all their entertainment was in front of a screen. So these kids were, were doing 15 hours of screen time and all their friendship stuff was on social media platform, you know, WhatsApp um, and Snapchat and so on. And most of them, by the end, by the end of the first lockdown, um, they began to appreciate that schools are more than just bricks and mortar, more than just um, teachers downloading information. It, it's about a, a connection between you, everyone else in the classroom, um, and experiencing things together, which you can't do in a in a in a in a in a in a room where you're in front of a screen. And you know, if you're finding it difficult to understand what's being told to you, it, it's quite difficult to put your hand up and say. Do you know, I didn't understand that equation. Can you just go back to the beginning? And a lot of kids said that their experience of it was, it was a novel at the beginning. They, 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 you know, they kind of appreciated that they had to be there, but there was a loss of learning. And kids all over the country have now got quite big gaps in their understanding because they, they couldn't ask questions if they didn't understand. So, yeah. Homeschooling works for some, but the the drawback is that um, you can't replicate uh, sport, you can't replicate uh, uh, music, drama, thing things, and and you know try having a, a school dance online. It doesn't really work. You know, you you, you, got, you got me thinking about a business model while while, while I was while I was li listening to that. You know, I, I, and you know, maybe maybe it's already out there, or maybe it's got no legs. But t t tell me. When you talk, when we talk about homeschooling, um, you know, up until eighteen months ago, you know, to me, homeschooling means you know, a parent decides to obviously to homeschool a kid, and the parent is ultimately responsible for 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 pulling together the components of that education. Now, depending on the age, maybe that is the parents delivering some of the curriculum, or maybe as they get older, it's you know, the parents put, pulling in various various tutors and, and and they put it together. What what. what but what happened, obviously, over over lockdown, was it was effectively 
I guess, organised homeschooling on 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 a on a mass scale. I mean, are, are there any are there any institutions out there, or do you, do you think there's scope for an actual organised homeschooling? I.e., as a parent, I don't have to go and think where do I get my maths tutor from, where do I get my geography tutor from. I go to the you know to the to the Stowe Online School, and my 11 year old logs it you know logs in, and she has a very formal curriculum, even to the point of I guess meeting. Friends, I mean, I know we've talked about the fact that there's nothing like the human interaction, but 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 you know, just if for whatever reason it suited the parents' circumstances that they wanted a homeschool kid, I mean, do, do, do you is there anyone out there doing, uh, you know, a, a full online curriculum with uh, you know, Zoom meets and stuff? So um, d during lockdown, one, one or two independent schools um, set set up a um, online learning academy. So e Eton, for example has got something called e Eaton Connect, which uh, it encouraged state educated kids to log on and supplement their, their curriculum. There's a company which is um, which is run by an, an old Stoic, so somebody from Stoke called Minerva, which does exactly what you've just described. And you can, um, you can log on, tap into experts teaching maths, English, history, sciences, and um, again, that is a kind of ho home school equivalent of private education, uh, and and it can be done for a, a fraction of the fees. So if you think that a day fee at Stowe is you know, about twenty twenty four thousand pounds, Minerva for, for, for the for the year for, for a whole year, um, Minerva will be doing that for five to six thousand pounds by you know so so you cut out all the um the overheads all the the running costs of the school and you deliver the lesson straight into the the um into the living room of the the person accessing that particular subject uh, and and for some families you know that 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 works particularly you know families who um you know we we've, we've, we've got families who are who are traveling who are on the road um who you know have to, have to move house quite a lot because of the, um, the nature of the business, but on the the, the losses, the, the friendships that you get from schools, sure. and that sense of belonging to a wider uh, community, which has got a, a, a different, a slightly different sense of purpose, and and I you know I I would say that you know fifty percent of your education is about developing your your character. Um, and you do that with with other people. So, I mean, you will remember from school, there were people you looked up to, there, there were people you, you, you sort of went out of your way to, to avoid, um, people you admired because they showed, you know, grit, resilience, conscientiousness, they were, they were kind. And as, you know, humans we are social creatures and we, we model our behavior on what we see in other people. And and that's very hard to do if you're doing it with somebody who's who's just on a screen in front of you, because it's quite hard to pick up nuances, isn't it? I mean, we're having a one to one conversation. You're very good at nuance because you write things down. I'm always surprised by the number of people who you have a conversation with and they never <laughs> they don't write anything down. And so, you know, within within 30 minutes of the conversation, 60 percent of it is, is kind of forgotten. Um, my, 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 my Apple notes on my telephone are into the thousands, literally yeah. into the thousands. I mean, it, I mean, obviously now, I mean, this is, I, I guess, a more organised, formal thing. So for sure, I'm taking notes. But I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll take notes at, you know, at, at the dinner, at, at, at the beach, at, at, at the meeting yeah. with a friend. You know, there's, because there's, there's, there's always something in every conversation. You think, yeah, you know what? I need, to, I need to, need to look back on that later. And uh, you know, I'm, 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 I'm not, uh, I'm not too proud to admit that I will absolutely have forgotten this if it's, uh, if, if, if yeah. it gets. Ten minutes. No, I, I, when I sit in conferences and, and and listen to speakers, and I, you know, you look at around, you look around, and no one's got a pen, <laughs> no one's got their yeah, their bit of paper in front of them. And you just think, you know, you, you will forget this, and there could be something here which is really important, and if you can capture it, and um, you know, you may you may not need it now. But you can come back to it in three to six months' time. So I'm I'm with you. I mean, it's one of the things that Richard Branson, who is an old Stoic, he always has a notebook with him. He's like you. He's always got a notebook. He's always 
um, is a, and he says, you know, he's a magpie. He'll he'll jot down good ideas, and um, you never know when they come in useful. Well, I would just just finishing on that uh, that homeschool versus real school uh, uh, conversation. I mean, what what would uh, I think, what what would suit me as a concept? And I say that I say me, and this is me as a parent, as as as, as opposed to maybe necessarily the child. But you know, would be the, would be the ability to be able to dip in and out, it, it, but but in 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 a formal in a formal way. So you know, so for for example, uh, my daughter Harley, uh, she's she's coming out here to see me in a couple of weeks time now a couple of weeks time is actually after the school holidays have finished and without boring everyone with the background you know it was just mutually inconvenient for her to be here during the school holidays so effectively she, she's got she's got to take seven or eight days out of school uh which now there's a, there's a few different ch chains of thoughts like obviously what the one side is school school's obviously not over the moon about the situation from a personal perspective, I, I wanted to be here, but I also believe that, you know, you talk about communication and numeracy and I guess all, all those other skills. I think it's very important, uh, you know, to, to, to get uh, a global view of the world, you know, to, to interact to interact with different people, etc. So aside from the selfish fact that I want to see I want to see my child when I want to see them, I, I believe it, you know, very much benefits her. Uh, overall upbringing, you know, being able to experience different cultures and meet different people. But what, rather than me and school being at friction on this, what would have suited me much, much better was that I could say, look, I needed to come to Dubai for these eight days. However, during those eight days, can she please log, log on to the online version of school school for this week, as opposed to being in the physical classroom? You know, I'm, I'm not looking for her to not be educated, and I'm more than happy to put the six six hours a day aside for her to continue with those. But I'd like I'd like her to be uh, you know to, to be able to tra travel around with me when it suits as well. Okay, well that that's interesting because um, the last eighteen months has taught all of us that um, you know school getting a whole school together in one place is, is, is challenging, you know, particularly coming from countries which have got, um, you know, quite, quite strict um, travel um, uh, restrictions. And, and so, you know, we, we've, we've got most of our resources up on what we call the VLE, the virtual learning uh, environment. And um, so if a child is out of education, for, for whatever reason, you know, it could be COVID, um, it could be a bereavement. It, it could be, you know, something like your circumstances where where parents um, are are living in a country and um, you know travel isn't always straightforward. So the child can log on to the VLE, can access the the physics or the religious studies lesson for that day. And Is that a live lesson? They can watch a live lesson. So during lockdowns uh, and even when we were you know, in, in the last, last term when we had about 25% of the school wasn't at school, we were doing live lessons and, and the cameras were, were on. This term, we, 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 we've tried to encourage everybody to get back to school. So we haven't got the live stream, but we're ready to go. We, we can switch at a moment's notice back to, to live streaming. It's just that at the moment, we don't need it because we, we've got We've got everybody back at school, but that you know we're we're coming into winter. Um, you know, case rates are, are high. You know, we we, we got to fifty thousand a day last last week, um, largely transmission through schools. So you know we're ready to switch back onto a, a virtual platform, and 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 if we need to, we can do um, synchronous and asynchronous. So teaching in in a classroom and teaching online at the same time if we if we have to um te teaching in a classroom i think is is better i think pupils prefer it on the whole there are some types of characters the introverts who prefer being at being at home um so some some pupils actually you know re really like this um environment where they're not having to worry about how they look whether they appear, you know, whether they're going to be picked on by a teacher suddenly, you know, you know, haycocks, you know, what, what's the, um, what colour does um, uh, anhydrous copper sulphur, sulphite go when, when water's added to it, you know, and suddenly you, you, you freeze because you think, oh God, you know, I know the answer, um, but you're on the spot. 
And so some people actually prefer being in control of the, the learning environment, which is what the virtual platform provides. So I think, again, one of the things that's happened in the last 18 months is that um, teachers have had to be agile. They've had to adapt. They've had to think about the, the delivery. And, and many teachers coming out of lockdown back into the classroom are now using um, flip lessons. So have recorded many of their lessons. So the lessons could be accessed online. And when they come into the classroom, it's, you know, Matt, you know, what, what did you think of that history lesson uh, on the causes of World War II? You know, do you think appeasement could have could have succeeded? So you're kind of assuming that the child has watched the lesson, has participated, and is coming into the classroom now with a with with a a, a basis of knowledge which allows you to have a discussion. It makes it so much more interesting. So again, in the last the last eighteen months, have seen um, schools um take technology forward in a way that um none of us were able to anticipate and you know we're now i mean i, I chair a, a charity um we've got a, a board meeting next week we I, I can't see us going back to a physical board meeting unless we really want to you know get to know each other well and then we'll go out for dinner afterwards but you know everything has changed um, because of um, because of the way we now access technology, including the classroom, and that can only be a good thing. Listen, I've got, I'm conscious. I'm conscious of uh, of your, yeah, your yeah. time as well. So I, I want to uh, I want to want to delve into a couple more questions before we're unfortunately going to let you go. Can I um, ask you a question? What, what was your favourite subject at school? Favourite subject. I mean. Uh, I, I guess at the time I probably never felt I had one, but it would it would put it would probably be be maths. I mean, I, I was never I, I was never great at you know. I think what I found the the, the biggest difference between G, G City and A level, that in, incre incredible uh, depth of subject matter difference. I mean, I, I was I was never a great. I was never a great studier at school, uh, you know. I guess uh, you just purely because I, w I wasn't putting the effort in. Uh, but you know, I, I'm, I'm not, I'm not that. Uh, and I, uh, I, I, and I kind of felt that I could breeze through my GCSEs doing doing little to no work, and I got you know straight A's and A stars across the board. Moved on to moved on to A level, and and the and the, the step up was was absolutely immense. Um, but and I'm probably not answering your question exactly. But I mean, uh, as a GCSE perspective, you know, I, I, I very, I very much like maths. I like chemistry. You know, I like, I guess, I like uh, problem solving. You know, fa factual type things. Then when I moved onto my onto my A levels, I, I, I did a real mishmash of A levels. I did uh, uh, business studies. I did accountancy. I did classical civilization. Um, and uh, I, 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 I forget a couple of the, the others. But, you know. I, and when, yeah. when did you know that you had this talent for business? When did that come out? When did that emerge? Well, I mean, I'd, I'd always wanted to be in business. I mean, you know, uh, I mean, my, my father had his own business, which I guess you know was was some kind of bearing uh, on, on my on my formative years. I mean, I remember from being. 11, 12 years old, uh, you know, pretty much all the books I consumed were, were, were business related books. Um, so uh, I, I, I always knew I would be in business. I think, you know, when I was kind of 15, 16, I started to you know, try and sell things at the market or, you know, or, or, or you know, find opportunities to, 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 to make money from. Um, and, and so I guess that's, I was always very, very keen to end my, uh, end my educational um, journey as quick as possible. Um, yeah. Because because I just felt I felt I wanted to be out, wanted to be out there working and also you know for example I, I, I'd done uh, A level accountancy so so when I moved I went to uni but I only lasted six six weeks uh, and, and one of uh, one of my well my subject was was, was business and in business and finance uh, so we do accountancy at degree level but because I already had the you know, the business studies and the accountancy. Um, uh a levels and you know kind of years of studying it from a personal perspective i, I felt that everything we were doing at uni was so 
beyond elementary to me that uh, you know that, that I wasn't enjoying being there and I was trying to work at the same time. So it kind of it, it you know it, it, it made me uh, made me want to leave. And I you know I, I but I was in an era where uh, you know education and particularly further education it was whether it was seen or whether it really was paramount to, to, to future future success. Uh, it was de definitely something that was instilled in me from my parents, and, and yeah. my mom was an was an HR director. So I mean, you know, I, I'd watch her in an employment capacity, and and they wouldn't. I mean, they wouldn't contemplate hiring someone who who, who hadn't you know achieved X Y Z uh, at, at university. Um, so so you know, it was very much pushed on me that if if I've not gone to uni, I'm I'm, go I'm going to be you know fa failing in some way. I was desperate to get off and make some money, so I I kind of convinced my parents to allow me to leave uni after about six or seven weeks, uh, and I was going to go off and, and work. And I thought I'll just consider it a gap year, and if I if if I've if I've made my millions during my gap year. Uh, then, then uh, I don't have to go back to university. But if I haven't, I can consider it a gap year, and I'll go back to uni again. And I, 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 I always joke that you know, 22 years on, I'm still keeping my fingers crossed that I don't have to go back to uni next September. <laughs> but what, what are your what are your goals? So I mean, you, you've made your money. You've, you know, you, you, you've you've lost money. You've made money. And and what are you still hoping to achieve? I, I saw that you've got a charity that you're you're, you're supporting. Um, have you have you got something that you're still hoping to achieve after all of this? You know, I, I know I know it. Uh, I, I know it's uh, probably a cliched answer in in, in into in, in today's world, but I think I think I see freedom and happiness um, as uh, 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 much more as my drivers now than they were. Well, well, were five years ago, 10, 15, 20 years ago. You know, now, uh, if, if you'd asked me years and years ago, you know, what, what do you want? The, the answer was always very much, you know, houses around the world and, and, and a private jet to fly, you know, to, to, to fly, fly between them all. Uh, when, whereas when I look at what I want now, uh, you know, it's, it's to be able to not to, you know, to be able to turn my telephone off for two days and, and not and not not worry about the consequences of, of, of not answering people's calls. You know, to, to to be able to spend the two or three hours in the morning in the gym or to be able to, you know, do what I want with my my friend or with my daughter etc and i think I've, I've still got some i've still got some ch some ch business challenges i want to i want to fight through i mean i've got you know four or five different businesses that, that, that i own and operate at the moment that you know that i want to i want to achieve um you know certain i guess what, what i would consider successes or greatnesses in those businesses where my head's at at the minute it's very much i don't want to take on any more projects because you know i i, I want to be able to give, give those a full attention and uh, you know I, 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 when i've done them you know maybe take a reassess that you know my, my monetary situation at that point will be more than enough more than comfortable enough to to uh, you know never have to work again and 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 to, and to go and you know and explore the the um the, the fun the freedom the happiness act mm -hmm. kind of things i was talking about a minute ago that said i get bored very easily and see, I, I love I seeing see, yeah i see you as one of li life's lifelong learners because the you know the fact that you're you you know you're constantly moving you know you're constantly looking for a new a new challenge you're constantly pushing at the boundaries of um you know what uh, orthodoxies there are in in business and saying why why do we do it that way um and and that's interesting because it it, it sort of loops back to what we were saying at, at the beginning which is what is the point of education and 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 you you know you had your six weeks at uni and you couldn't see the point of it and so you went off and did your own thing but the fact that you're having all these podcasts and you're bringing in all these you know people who are um, specialists in their field who have you know made contributions to society i mean it suggests to me that one of your great motivations is that you're you're, you're still challenging it's still I, I love i love to i, I love i love to learn um, and again, you know, the questions you'll ask me now, you'll get a very different answer from to, 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 to how I would have felt if, 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 it was, if it was 20 years ago. And I guess, you know, when I left uni, uh, I was leaving because I guess I probably thought my learning was done. Uh, whether I thought my learning was done or whether I just felt that I, I already had more knowledge than that course was going to give me, I, you know, I, I, I don't know. But, you know, I mean, 100%. 
you know, I, I love I love learning from you know from people uh, yeah. who, who've who've got you know who've already got their successes you know their their, their skill sets to teach um, and you know I guess despite my successes in in various aspects of business. I'm still learning on a permanent basis, and you know, I mean, that's two, that's two of my well, well, both my kind of almost like day job and gripe at the moment. You know, I'm very much learning about about culture uh, and 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 about uh, I guess be, be, being a better leader, being you know, uh, f fixing staffing fixing staffing problems that that I was whether uneducated or or too immature to you know to to be able to understand and deal with 15 or, uh, or 20 years ago. But yeah, one of my biggest gripes with you know with certain people in my employ is the fact that they have zero interest in learning anything at all um ever and uh, you know and, and it's not to say that uh you know it has to be done in a, in a, in a formal capacity uh and i said you know the, the the school and the uni was pro probably never never for me but you know i couldn't imagine i mean you know a big part of my day is reading a book is is listening to a podcast is talking to someone who's a you know a, a world expert in in something that i'm not uh, and okay that they may not not be the be the, 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 the formal methods of learning but yeah I always I always want to learn something new from somebody because uh, because as long as you enter those circumstances with an open mind you know what you could take from a headmaster and apply to business or from an athlete and apply to your personal life or whatever it may be so I guess you know yeah one of my drivers is constant knowledge and, and constant personal improvement but if you'd have asked me that 20 years ago I would certainly have never given you that answer. Whether I just didn't know it and I was doing it subconsciously, uh, but you know, the, I, I would never, I would never have uh, answered like that. Yeah, it's amazing how much um, wisdom we we accumulate over time, isn't it? That um, as you get older, you begin to appreciate things that you didn't value much when when you were younger, and and also you become a bit more. I think you you you, you acquire a bit more humility you realize that you don't have all the answers that you don't have all the knowledge and that you can learn from other people um and that's an important skill isn't it Le learning how to le learning to listen and, and understanding your own limitations and how you can pick up new ideas and 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 do, do things differently and that that can be something we can do you know ev every day should have an a, a different lesson in it that we can take forward but it's a shame but you know it's a shame that we don't learn it or appreciate it until until we're adults because i mean th th there's not one adult that has ever ever not said something like oh i wish i carried on the guitar at school or i wish i yeah, you know I, yeah. I wish i put more more effort into my into french speaking at school and you know and, and then i i remember thinking well when i'm a parent because i'm a young parent and i'm a let's say i, I probably think i'm a cool parent i can i can you know convince my kid that you know, listen these were mistakes i made but look i'm not like all the other parents so you know listen to me and trust me stick with your piano stick with this stick with the other um but it, it, it doesn't work does it? it's, it's, it's funny i mean harley's like 15 now and she's finally starting to, starting to say oh you know I, I i shouldn't have stopped the piano when i was 12 or 11 i'm saying well no you shouldn't but at least you're acknowledging that at 15 not 35 you know if, if you can if you can you can jump back on it now then, uh, then, then there's still still time to keep in the game yeah it sounds, sounds like you've got good good relationship with her. That, that's key. yeah, very good, very good. good. Well, listen, I am very conscious that you have got a call in a couple I, of minutes. Uh, I have. As have I, and we, we, we will have to uh, maybe do a round a round two of this at some point because yeah, I've got, Matt, I've, I've got I've a lot really, of things. Well, I've, I've really enjoyed talking to you, and and I think um, you know once again, you know what what you've said about your your journey through business and how how you turn a company around and how you inspire people how you coach people mentor them it, it's so similar there's so many um affinities between what you do and what, what what we try to do and you know if you ever want a job in teaching um I'll, I'll, uh, let me know <laughs> well i i'd say i i i'd love i'd love to i'd love to come and do um do 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 um a talk a business, a business yeah, studies talk or a, 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 a life talk to the school or something so when you know we should we should email about that offline and i'll uh, I'll come and do it when I'm back in England I, for sure. We're always looking for inspiring teachers, so and as speakers. So I'll, I'll let you, I'll let you go now. But we'll be in touch, and um, I hope to get you back and talking to our business studies and the entrepreneurs um, who will be inspired by what you've got to say.
Well, I'd love to. Listen, Anthony, okay, it's been man. great having you here. Uh, Cheers, so I'll, I'll, I'll say goodbye now. Guys, I hope you've enjoyed listening to Anthony as much as I've enjoyed talking to him. And 100% uh, we'll be getting him back for round two. So thanks a lot for listening as always. And I will see you on a future episode.